Hello, and welcome to The Kosh. I'm your host, Timber Smith, and The Kosh is a podcast that spotlights people who've had an association with The Kosh and the surrounding Fox Cities area. Good morning, Kosh listeners. How are we doing today? It's a fantastic morning. A little gloomier than yesterday, but not, not too bad. And, you know, we, we're getting this dusting of snow. But it's just a dusting. So you know what? If I'm going to get snow, a dusting never bothers me. If it's so little snow that you can get out there with your leaf blower, that that there is a blessing to me in in snow terms. I am all about that life. Oh, and before we go any further, let me just say that this episode of The Kosh is sponsored by Sturgeon Spirits Craft Distillery, The Kosh's newest tradition. And as you always know, I always want to say, you know, it's the weekend because that's when we record these episodes and there will be a field trip to my favorite church known to, as Sturgeon Spirits. I will be sitting down having a The Kosh cocktail. If you've not had one of those yummy things yet, you need to go ahead and be about that life. And on the way there, if you really want to top off the experience of going to Sturgeon Spirits, you must stop at Z's and pick up a bacon sandwich. Now, you think I'm kidding about that? I am not kidding about that. This bacon sandwich has about a quarter pound of bacon on it. It's happiness. It's happiness, and it's in a box. And there's nothing better than a good cocktail and a bacon sandwich to make the weekend right. It's just how I feel about life. So, all right, but on to what the Kosh is really about. Well, Kosh is about amazing guests and amazing conversations. But what it's really, really about And here's what I'm going to say. You know what I'm about to say. I don't know why I continue to get these amazing, amazing guests. So the cash is about the amazing, amazing guests, first and foremost. And this week is no different. I've got a fantastic guest, somebody that I had some um, some some professional run ins with back in the day uh, when I was working in veteran services. And uh, they're they're still in the community, moving around, doing amazing things. And I'm excited to have this conversation for many, many reasons, but I'm curious to see where it goes. But I, you know what I'm going to say, no matter what, it's going to be a fire episode. So that's what's really going to happen here. But, you know, without further ado, this week's guest is Jessica Williams. What's up, Jessica? Hey. How are we doing? I'm feeling great. You? Yep. Fire. (laughs) We're ready for fire. You ready to jump in? Ready to jump in. Can you please share a little something about yourself and your connection with the Kosh and the surrounding Fox Cities area? Sure. So I actually was born and raised in Oshkosh. Um, oh, you were? I didn't know that. Uh-huh. In the town of Black Wolf. So mm. south side of Oshkosh, half an hour to the city <laughs> every mm. day. <laughs> um, yeah, I went to Lakeside Elementary School, and then my parents transferred my brother and I to the Catholic School District, so St. John Newman at the time, and then Lourdes, now Lourdes Academy High School. Okay. Yeah. So you've been here this whole time. You're super cautious, I would say. I would love to say that, but <laughs> I did leave Oshkosh for college. I went to Alverno in Milwaukee. It's an all-women's college. And then after that, I did come back to Oshkosh, where everyone said, hey, get a college degree. You're going to make 50000 Yeah, it was 2009. Could not find a job. I was kind of like, I'm so confused. <laughs> this is what society told me to do. <laughs> Which led me down to the veteran path. So I enlisted in the military. Long story short, uh, it took me about two years before I enlisted. So I did things backwards. Hey, that's how I enlisted. I enlisted in my my third semester of UW Oshkosh. Really, I yep. didn't know that. Yep, that's how I that's how I did it. Mine was more of financial reasons. Need to get the money right. Yep. <laughs> Funny story with that. The financial reasons I think is is very helpful. The recruiters didn't like me very much because of that reason. <laughs> I wasn't some 17, 18 year old kid that would say, yes, I'll sign the dotted line. I was like, so here are my college loans. Here's my ASAP scores. What can you get me? <laughs> you were negotiating. Oh, yes. You knew. I did. Navy didn't interest me. Marines was a little too tough. I wanted Air Force because that's the route that people should say you should go. But they wouldn't pay back my college loans. So I waited, and National Guard didn't call me, which was my my 
family's history and then reserves. I was like, okay, you can be an MP. And I'm like, oh, military police. Okay. That's different than my degree in communications. Sure. Do I get my loans paid back? They're like, no. I'm like, then why are you calling me? Call me back with an actual job that pays it. So long story short, they hooked me up with human resources. It was kind of my last choice, but the college was paid back. And a month later, I was shipped out. Mm. So, How'd you enjoy? It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. You did, That wasn't even good. You didn't even make that sound convincing. Come on now. You can do better than that. Bruh. <laughs> Yes, everyone's got their own story with basic training. I really thought that I would struggle with the drill sergeants, which I did. It was tough to be yelled at all the time. But what harder what was harder for me was being 24 and the rest of the females. Females are catty. They oh. are out to get you. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but when you're dealing with 17, 18-year-olds and the diversity, so many people from all over the country, it's amazing how they grew up. Some didn't know how to do hygiene. Some didn't know how to just do what you were told. Some wanted to hook up with this person or not care what the drill sergeant said. It was just a lot of chaos. So that was interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I thought more of the, you know, grunt work type of deal. Oh, no. See, not at, not at the beginning for basic. I, I feel you on that. So that was the it. You went in too mature. I would say yes. I would hope that I was more mature. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm just saying because, you know, at the beginning, like you do, it is in a group of any and everybody, right? And they tear you down and they build you back up into, in this case, the soldier that they need you to be. And uh, I don't know. I enjoyed that part of it because I really connected with people that I would have never probably found common ground with without being in that type of environment and really built some amazing bonds as far as and and learned how to take an order and learned how to trust people that I probably would have never normally trusted. 100%. It's actually, I don't know if, if, if you can remember back, but if you ever got a weekend off and you would hang out with your battle buddies and then you'd see them in uniform, right? And they're like your best pal. And then you go on the weekend with them and you're like, huh. I would have never expected that outfit on you or like their attitude. It would just kind of change. It was very interesting to like be battle buddies, but you would have never maybe been friends if you didn't experience the same thing. Oh, yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Because I had two dudes. (laughs) I had one dude who was a, my battle buddy was a dude from Iowa and he was from the, the sticks of Iowa and he played the trumpet. So he was joining the military band and just not the kind of dude I would have expected to kick away, but he was an amazing battle buddy. He held me down. He was great. And there was another gentleman named Kilgore and Kilgore came from the South and, uh, yeah, he came from, he came from a South where we definitely wouldn't have got along. And, but that was my guy. And at the end of the day, he was one of my closest friends in the military, and we we kept in touch for years. And uh, and to this day, I, I still got a lot of love and trust in him. But nope, we wouldn't have been hanging out at all, shoot. By his family standards, I don't even know if we would have been allowed to hang out. So that would have been a thing. Yeah, I think that's one of the amazing things about being in the military is the connection and the diversity and to the left and your right, like you just trust. You have the same values the same accountability, the work ethic. It's a tight-knit group, and, you know, I actually miss it a lot of days. So, you know, uh, since you went ahead and filled out <laughs> your outline, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and dig in. So uh, we it. went for some more school, huh? We did. <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. Let's talk about it. Sure. Let's see here. So after coming back from basic training and um, advanced individual training, I returned to the National Guard Challenge Academy. So that was the job I had after college. And I, that was actually the main reason why I enlisted in the military was I wanted to better understand what these cadets were going through. They're 16 to 18 year olds that can't graduate high school. It's on Fort McCoy. So it's a quasi military environment. And if I went to basic training, I could better relate to what they're going through in that five and a half month training. Well, at that same time, I lived in Sparta. Okay. That's a small town. They're known for their bike ride bike path and that's about it yeah how many people is that <laughs> i don't know yeah, I, don't know. Not, <laughs> hey, I was gonna say uh, not many 
So I was like, okay, well, I should get my master's. The military is going to pay for it. And why would I start brand new, right? So I'm going to go for the business administration. Just makes sense, the MBA. Well, long story short, I have lots of long stories. I, it's interesting because I went into the military, like you said, mature, right? But it changed me in a different way. So I almost outgrew the Challenge Academy, which made me sad because it was a great job, but that led me to my new career path. So after a year being back, I landed a great job in Madison. So that made me relocate. At that time, 2013, there wasn't this whole online schooling. So at Viterbo University, I couldn't finish my MBA there. I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll finish it when I get back to Madison. Well, then I got super busy in the sense of being really productive with the reserves, just kind of like go, go getter soldier, as well as the job I got was working for the National Guard as a contractor, helping our service members with resumes, employment transition, because at that time, our unemployment rate was at or below um, around 10%, which is a pretty significant percentage. And it was all your guard and reservists. Now, what's interesting about they're like, well, you're military, you have all these skills, all these jobs are going to hire you. It's not really the necessarily the case. When you're guard and reserve, you're technically part time. So your part time military career isn't paying those bills. And how do you find a job, especially when you are a 17, 18 year old? that just went straight into the military and looking for those skills. So trying to help understand the military jargon, because we definitely have a different language, and changing into civilian terms. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so for uh, folks listening, I was a 42 Alpha, is what the military would say. In civilian terms, that's an HR, human resources. I was also post operations, which is 79 Victor, and then I got out as a staff sergeant. So that's a, what's called an E6. It'd be like a manager in one of your jobs. So because of my career path with the civilian and military career, I actually never finished my master's of business. I did try to go to Whitewater, took a class or two, and I just was overwhelmed. I'm like, okay, well, I keep landing jobs that I want, so I don't necessarily need the master's. If you ever go on LinkedIn and check out my profile, because I gave LinkedIn workshops all the time, that's my entire background, my entire history. If you ever really want to figure out what Jessica Williams is up to, I don't stay in one spot. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I just have a zest for knowledge and challenges. And at some point, if someone doesn't want me to grow, I will leave. <laughs> I'm just kind of one of those challenge persons that just wants to find my my passion, my path, and, and helping people. The other tidbit about that is I've had some dream jobs. And it, they will say most of the time, you don't ever get lucky with having one dream job. I've been lucky and I've had three. The Wisconsin Challenge Academy, the Wisconsin Employment Resource Connection or Job Connection Education Program, that's where I was writing resumes, and then serving the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Those three jobs were fantastic, but due to budget cuts and politics, that's what ended those careers for me. Not necessarily that I am a job hopper, as probably this generation would look at, but nowadays you don't necessarily add a job for more than a few years, it seems. Yeah, I mean, it's different, right? I, even though I feel like I come from more of the old school culture where you can hold a job for a long time, I also very much understood, like, in a lot of cases, if you wanted upward mobility or the ability to grow or more money, you kind of had to play the job movement game, mm -hmm. right? You were you had better op opportunity to get more money by switching a job or at least applying for a job and then forcing the hand of your current employer to consider your employment uh, benefits and, 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 and what they were paying you. But that sometimes that worked, sometimes that didn't work. And then sometimes you actually applied for stuff where you were like, oh, no, that's a cool opportunity. I actually think I want to go do that. And I don't know. At least that's my experience. Yes. Yeah. So with all those great dream jobs and things that kind of cut, what led me back to Oshkosh is, so I applied for the job that like, oh, that, that's like totally me. This is going to be amazing. And that was working for Secretary Zimmerman. Call me naive. I didn't realize it was more of a political role. <laughs> I knew it was political when I met you. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. 
<laughs> yeah, when I got the job, I did not. I was just like, no, I'm going to cover the whole state of Wisconsin. I'm going to focus on veterans. And the really cool thing about the position was I didn't get the job I applied for. Um, someone else did, um, which made sense because he was an LTE, limit term employee. Um, but Dan Zimmerman calls me up and he's like, you did a great job. You're exactly what I've been looking for, but in a different role. Could you give me some time? I need to talk to HR and make this position happen. I'm like, I am one signature way of going active duty. I can give you three weeks tops because I'm about to ship. <laughs> I'm going to go this new path. So yeah, he made it happen. And his goal was, all right, I am a retired uh, lieutenant colonel. And he was trying to find a job. And he would type in all of his skills and he would end up with like a landscaper. And he's like, I have a bachelor's, a master's. I've been you know, an officer in the military, like, why am I getting these positions? So we figured out that these skills weren't relatable. And so my role was trying to help bridge that gap. Yeah, the translation isn't hot. No, not at all. And the bigger part of it, too, is not just the employment side, but the education side. So Wisconsin's number one with veteran benefits offering 24 of the 26 nationally known. And a big piece of that is that Wisconsin will give you the Wisconsin GI Bill. And so for those that listen, your Wisconsin veterans get a public Wisconsin um, college, technical college, taken care of, um, free tuition. With that being said, if you relocate to Wisconsin and you've been living here for five years, then you qualify. So it's a really great benefit. But the thing with that is how do you go from serving your country deploying and going back to school and just being a standard college student? And there's that kind of gap of bridging. And so the goal was trying to, one, talk to the employers about how to be veteran ready, not veteran friendly. Friendly means like you're just drank the Kool-Aid. We we pre, we support our veterans, hire them. No, veteran ready means like, okay, we might be outspoken. We might actually want more of challenge. We want a path. We want to grow, give us more people to manage, things like that. If you can understand that, you're more than likely going to kind of maintain or keep your veterans. For the college aspect, it's, okay, what is this degree going to get me? And how am I going to connect with the other fellow students and working with your veteran officer to work with the different types of uh, GI bills? Then the third one was entrepreneurship was, okay, there's a lot of veterans that have that work ethic, that want that challenge, that have great ideas that they could be their own business owner. Uh, so the whole, whole point of Dan Zimmerman hiring me was trying to find what could we do to connect all those dots? Could we potentially even change legislation to make it happen? Um, so at the beginning was a lot of research. Uh, the downside was that role only lasted 11 months because politics changed <laughs> and that job kind of, kind of end, came to an end. So with that being said, When I got the job offer, as I mentioned, I was supposed to go active duty. And so Zimmerman was like, oh, so you live in Madison. I said, well, not not anymore, technically. I didn't renew my lease, so I don't know where I'm going to live. And he's like, well, it's up to you, wherever you want to go. And I was like, sweet. If I'm going to travel 75% of the time, I am not going to pay Madison you know, rent. <laughs> so oh. moved back home. Uh, thankfully, mom and dad retired. So I took over their house to kind of help it um, and return back to my roots, which was really cool. I, I really, to be honest, I didn't think I was going to come back to Oshkosh because when you're in a small town, in a sense, you're like, okay, I'm going to go see the world. And I have, I've been to 12 countries, all 50 states. I love to travel and meet new people and, and discover new things and cultures, but something about being home and it's definitely home. And then, um, so I found Ashgash Defense, picked me up, and kind of explored that. And then COVID happened, and so there's been lots of changes. So then I was like, okay, I keep trying to figure out where is my path. I had those three dream jobs, kind of confused where to go, and that's where the further education came out. <laughs> Someone suggested that, well, you've been part of the state of Wisconsin for six years. You keep being runner-up to director roles, management roles. What am I missing? And so they suggest that I get an MP, MPA, so Master in Public Administration versus the Business Administration. And that's where I started um, at UW Oshkosh. So for everyone listening, that's how I kind of met Timber in two different capacities. One, uh, working for the secretary, obviously working with the different universities. And then furthermore, when I became a student at UW Oshkosh. Yes. That's a journey. 
And I want to make one quick correction, and it's just just so people understand because uh, this is one of those things. When people hear certain things and they're like, oh, really? There is a cap to the number of credits you get with the Wisconsin GI Bill. It's 128. Yes. So you got it. But that's a degree. <laughs> that's a degree as long as you don't retake a whole, whole lot of things and you can actually focus in on – you know, focus in on what you want your degree to be. Uh, if you go undeclared for like 10 years, that's probably not going to fly. And let's say, because what happened with me was I didn't even know it existed. And I didn't believe it existed because I'm old, right? And so like people were sharing with me at the time, and this is after I'd been in Ash back to school and I had got my undergrad and was working there and they were like, oh, yeah, you should totally qualify for this Wisconsin GI Bill. I was like, huh, nah, man. I was like, I used up my my GI Bill a long, long time ago. You know, I was a reservist, blah, 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 blah. And back in the day, because anything, a lot of these great benefits didn't happen until after 9-11. So I'm a way pre-9-11 person. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, yeah, no, no, no. And then finally it was like, oh, no, no, just check it out. So I checked it out, and then I was like, oh, my God. So then that's how I got my master's degree was through the Wisconsin GI Bill. But I didn't believe that I would qualify. Well, first I didn't know it existed, and then I didn't believe it, I would qualify. But the one thing I will say is that is one heck of a benefit. So if you're out there and you're curious and you've served, you should look into it if, if additional schooling is something that you're interested in. 100%. All right. That's a good journey. And so you know we're not done right. All right. <laughs> All right. I don't know why you acted like we're done because we're not done because we're we're not even look we're we're in we're we're deep into the episode and we haven't even gotten to the first segment but I'm not done with you. Okay, <laughs> bruh. So now, Jessica, the entrepreneur, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what that was, what this journey was. How do we? How did that transition happen? And what are we doing right now? Yeah. So I realized in the last few years of changing jobs and seeking higher education that perhaps I'm just not where I was meant to be. So I am now the owner of what's called Whimsical Celebrations. It's interesting because after hearing about my path, everyone's like, I don't get it. What's the connection? Throughout all of my careers, I was always the one organizing this military dining in or dining out, which is like a military ball, or this human resources conference, or I would have my own birthday parties or my friends getting married in bridal showers. So I'm officially a business that have decoration and game rentals, partying event planning, whether it's a, for a nonprofit, a small business, large business, or you personally, uh, because I feel that everyone needs to celebrate everything. My motto is elevating life special moments. And the purpose behind that is at the end of the day, I love to make people happy. And all of my jobs have always been a service of some sort. And I need to have a purpose in life. And I started to lose my light um, in the last few years because I did have those dream jobs and they all came to an end. And I was like, what am I doing anymore? I got out of the military because life happens and it's been kind of disheartening. And so how well, do I find my light? So someone suggested, they're like, well, you really were lighting up because the story is I put on what's called an art party. I said, dress for a mess. We're putting art and party. Now, every year I do one themed party this yeah. year or that year, two years ago, everyone wore white. And I had everything for everyone. We did a slip and slide with paint. What? We did Twister with paint. What? We threw darts at paint-filled balloons. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the fun one was we tie-dye with squirt guns. So this entire day was gorgeous sunshine. Everyone could come and go as they please. I had canvases, pots, jars, you name it. Everyone could just paint, and you didn't have to be an artist. It was just, let's be a kid again and have a blast. And it was the best party I've had, um, literally the most compliments I've ever given. And I was like, I wonder why. It's because it was different. It got people out of their everyday life. It was just fun and you could just be free and there was no judgment and you just had a good time. And so when I was explaining this to someone, they're like, 
why aren't you an event planner? And I said, well, let's be honest. It's Wisconsin. No one wants to pay for it. <laughs> it's normally why I didn't do it. But then I thought, well, maybe there's something here. Especially after COVID, I feel like we've realized we miss being with one another. We miss having that deep connection, those relationships. And as much as we're behind the screens, I think we still desire to be around others. Um, and what could I do? So I thought, well, you know what? I got nothing to lose. I'm not married. I don't have kids. So that's one helpful thing. I do have the VA system for my health care. So I thought, okay, let's take it, take a jump. Now at that time I was still working for the state. And I thought, okay, well, I, I can do this all. Well, I was working for the state full-time, trying to make my business happen while also being a full-time master's student. Nope, not going to do that at all. So I took that risk, left the state, and yeah, been in business about a year and a half and excited because I serve pretty much on Lac through Green Bay, all the surrounding areas, and I will travel as well because I just want to bring joy to people. And I guess the one thing I didn't mention, the biggest one, is hosting or a day of coronation. A lot of times people have their own parties because, yes, anyone could throw a party. It's not necessarily that you can't. I'm providing the fact that it, taking away your stress, you get to enjoy yourself because I get to take charge of all the logistics, especially when it comes to hosting. You can't enjoy your party because you're too busy trying to refill the ice and the beverages and making sure everyone's conversing. Let me do that. I will take up the trash. I will make sure everyone's having fun. I will talk to those that might look like maybe they're kind of the introverts and want to get involved but aren't really sure to have the conversation. I will make sure that those that are really extrovert that want to get going, I will get that game going. So that's one thing I would like to provide that's something different is that hosting aspect i'll be the first to say you know i just had my 50th birthday party not that long ago and it's hard to host like a party and still maintain and have fun right because once you throw the party it transforms from you having fun to you making sure everyone else is having fun exactly and that's not easy because you and then like i felt guilty because I had a really good turnout. I I felt loved. I felt supported. But I didn't feel as if I gave enough time to respect people's efforts to come and, and celebrate and respect my day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so what you're saying, I would have loved a you walking <laughs> around there <laughs> to help with that whole scenario. So I could have just focused on spending time with the people who were there to celebrate my birthday with me. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We're going to come back later and ask more questions about your business. Sounds good. In the meantime, we're going to ask about you and this dog. Oh. <laughs> Go on, tell us about the dogs. So I have a corgi. Her name is Duchess. She's seven, and she's definitely a princess. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I grew up with black labs, golden retrievers, and um, Great Dane. So it's kind of interesting I ended up with a small dog. <laughs> oh, I grew up with a Great Dane. Did you? Yes, yeah, Samantha. Samantha was humongous. Yes, that was that was the girl. And she was such a gentle dog, except for she was so big that, like, you can't really be gentle when you're big because you just turn your body and you knock over things. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and we had a small house, so that was even crazier. <laughs> it just didn't work out. Well, it, I love that dog, though. All right, cool. So if you weren't doing what you're what you're doing right now, what would you like to be doing? I would say out of all the positions I've been in, I'd love to be back and serving Secretary Zimmerman for the state of Wisconsin. Yeah. Yep. It was a lot of traveling, a lot of networking, a lot of listening. I feel like that's the biggest thing is it's interesting because when you go to school, they teach you all about answering, but they don't teach about active listening. I didn't learn that until college. And that's a difference. Like, I'm listening to what you're saying, but active listening means that you actually hear. What are those feelings? Where are they coming from? What could you do to support them? You're not thinking about what's the next thing you're going to say in the conversation. And that's what I loved about that position was because I was talking to other vets. I was talking to the different organizations and really trying to figure out what problems could I solve and how could I be more supportive and more engaged. Because a lot of the times, especially if you're within the state of Wisconsin's employment realm there was a lot of silos and you always kind of feel like it's the state capital madison versus the rest of the state and so bridging that gap was just amazing to feel like you're really connected and bridging it bridging that you ready to jump into the first segment i am 
Okay. The first segment is called What in the World is Going On With? And that's where you start with the phrase, what in the world? And then you tell us what's on your mind. So, Jessica, what's on your mind? Social media. You know, it's interesting because I was always someone that posted photos all the time on Facebook. And, of course, LinkedIn. And I would tell everyone LinkedIn is kind of like your resume and steroids. But that was the extent of it. I would scroll. I would post. It's interesting as an entrepreneur now because now everything I do is all about creating my brand and getting connected with those watching and following and engaging. I'm no longer, I guess, a consumer, which is really grateful because you can kind of go on that spiral. When you're just one of those consumers, you're scrolling, scrolling, you're always seeing and feeling like everyone's lives are better than yours or you're not able to do this or that. And everyone's like, oh my goodness, you post all the time. Like, you know, I'm like, yeah, but I don't notice it. I post and I walk away. And it's kind of freeing. It's exhausting, don't get me wrong, because you got to be consistent when you're marketing your brand. And what people say, especially marketing companies, they might say, oh, you know, you could pay X, Y, and Z and we'll, we'll post three times a week. That is not enough. If you think about it, your social media f- goes away within seconds. You're scrolling on so much. So what is enough? What is not enough? Like, it's just, well, what do you do? Is it a post? Is it a question? Is it a video? Um, and I've been learning a lot from my brother who's been managing my, my dad's business, and he's been doing it for four years, and I'm seeing the results. And it's nice because I'm learning from them, and I like to try to share it with others because that's what our world should be, all about sharing and not keeping all the finer secrets to yourself. That branding stuff is hard. Like to be out there and constantly posting because I, I get that. I've had people have that conversation with me about the cash and and I just I can't bring myself to post like that and that consistently and all the time. Like I, I just post, I don't know, when when it feels important enough or appropriate enough. Mm-hmm. But that's not really the best. That, that's not the best formula for success. Well, it depends because I feel like. You want to have purpose behind your posts, of course, and you want to make sure you connect. The downside is the algorithms. You don't know when your post is going to arrive and to who. So you might have posted five minutes ago, but maybe only 20 people saw it today, but 50 saw it three days from now. And that's why it's interesting, too, to try to, when posting, like I used to do like shout out Sundays. Well, that's great, but maybe someone saw it on a Wednesday, not a Sunday. So now I'm like confusing. So I just have to put it together. One big tip for people is AI, right? Use ChatGPT. You could literally say, create 30 questions, random questions to ask. And then literally a post every single day is a question for your followers to answer. Some completely will love to answer. Some might not work at all, and that's fine. But the cool thing about those questions is now you're getting understanding of what your consumers like. Like if I say, you know, what's your favorite color scheme for a birthday party? Now I'm starting to, oh, pink, orange. Oh, I never thought about that. So now I might come up with a different party theme because my consumer has said this idea kind of come. Yeah. Relating to one another, I guess. So what are you using right now for all your branding? Facebook is a major one, LinkedIn, Instagram, threads, and TikTok Hmm. besides the website. Are you actually, so you are using threads? Yeah. I didn't know, you know what? Because I, I remember there was a lot of buzz when threads came out and then all of a sudden I felt like you didn't hear anything. Yeah, I'm not as consistent. Facebook 100% is every day. I don't miss a beat on that. I've been improving with Instagram, learning more tricks in the trade of like reels. And then the rest of them are kind of hit and miss. Um, I'm not as consistent. I know I need to be. But at the same time, who are my audience? So one thing that I... Th- found out when I was giving a presentation to Nina High School. I'm old. I'm officially old because Facebook is the older generation. Oh, yeah. They don't they don't watch. They watch that to know what their parents are watching to make sure their parents aren't watching them. No, (laughs) they are not on Facebook. They are not on Facebook. It's literally Snapchat and maybe Instagram. But of course, my clientele aren't going to be high schoolers because they don't have the money and they're not going to be putting on the parties. But it's going to be the older generation, too, like my grandparents like or my parents. They're like, you know what? We're, we're done. We're tired of putting in all these events. Let's just pay someone else to do it, you know, to put on this event. So knowing that now threads, I went on it because it was the hype. 
it might come back. It's kind of like the Twitter thing, but you just kind of have to figure out like, who do you want to follow you? But then what's the purpose behind it was really more so to get my name out there, but I'm not going to lie. It's kind of nice. The more followers you get and the more content you spread, Facebook does pay you, which is kind of cool. I mean, I made $40 the other month. It was kind of, Oh, sweet. $40 I didn't have, but what's, you have to realize with that, though, it's not consistent. Like, you have no idea what Facebook is going to do or why they're doing what they're doing. It's kind of like the YouTube or subscribers. So you should never rely on that. It's just kind of like a little extra income if you really wanted it. Right. Fair enough. I like that one. Okay, that wins. <laughs> Social media. You know what? Let me ask you one more question. If you had any particular advice you'd want to give somebody, since you're kind of going through it, about utilizing social media because, uh, you know, there are, there are a number of entrepreneurs I, I have met and listened to the cash and either current entrepreneurs or future entrepreneurs. What, what do you, what's your, give, give us your one awesome takeaway. Okay. Well, there's kind of two, but it goes okay. one hand in hand. Be authentic to yourself because people are more drawn to that. You don't necessarily need to be fake. You don't have to be, different just be you and you're going to connect with the right people with that connection do your very best to not care what other people think social media has a lot of bullies you're going to have a lot of haters in a sense and you really just have to do your best to ignore it and acknowledge like you're awesome you're worthy you're enough and you're loved and the right people is your right customers and those that maybe not follow you or don't like it they're not your customers they don't need to be part of your life, and that's okay. Jessica, you got haters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know. Uh, I never thought about that aspect of it, but I guess anytime you put yourself out there, there's an opportunity for haters, huh? Always. Okay. Well, my what in the world is going on with? What in the world is going on with creating policy based on feelings? Yes. Bruh. Okay, I know you're wondering, what does that even mean? And this is what it means. So yesterday I was I, I was scrolling through social media, and I ran across how the now, and this already happened in Florida, but now the F- Alabama governor has just banned DEI from all public institutions, and, and that goes K through 12 and higher ed and all of those things. Right. And her thing that she said she banned it for was because it was divisive and it did to her. It made no sense in making white people feel guilty. And I just said to myself, you literally just admitted that you're making policy on feelings. When has that ever happened for anyone else? You didn't say it was because of it endangered anything that it did caused harm for anyone it, that that it, it was detrimental that it was that it cost a bunch of money it literally was because of feelings and that's got to be the weakest political statement that i've ever heard was to create policy for feelings i just want that to sink in because that's it, it wasn't, and then here's my thing, like, there's a lot of other stuff that happens. There's opportunities that don't happen because of things. There, there is loss of income because of things. And then, yeah, I can see policy being created. I can see initiatives being created. But to create policy, worrying about the feelings, not because The feelings aren't based in fact. That's even worse. It's not because the things that you're worried about being covered or spoken about didn't happen in American history. They happen. But because you're worried about the feelings of people. So we've got our government wasting good taxpayer dollars on feelings. Now, I don't care which side of the aisle you own. Make that make sense. Math that math for me. Math that math for me because that there makes no sense. Because throughout American history, there's been a lot of feelings hurt. And now all of a sudden, 
we're making policy about it. Why wasn't it good enough to make policy about it before for our fellow Americans? Let me just throw that in there. So, whew, as y'all can tell, I got feelings about that one because when I saw it now, when, when Florida did this, I just racked that up to that leadership. <laughs> I'm going to let that leadership have that. That's interesting leadership there. I'm going to let that go on and do what they do. I already think those repercussions, those those chickens are coming to hatch because of that. But it was basically because of the same kinds of things. But they at least, I don't know. I don't want to say they did a better job. They definitely did a better job making it way more political is what I'm going to say. But this time I was just reading this and I was just like, wow. They actually said it out loud. And that made no sense to me. And I feel like we should be a little bit ashamed about that. that that's what we're creating policy on now. Feelings. Hurt feelings. There's a lot of hurt feelings in America for all sorts of reasons. Never had policy created before about those. So that's where I'm at with it. That's my what in the world is going on with. I'm And Kosh, listen, you're going to have to forgive me on this one, but I make no apologies. This, that math ain't mathing. It doesn't make sense to me. I would agree. All right. I wasn't even going to make you say anything about it, Jessica. I was going to draw you into my, my, my crazy, but if you've got anything you want to add, please. I might have seen, I might say too much. Okay. <laughs> you going to let that one go? I'll let that one go. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Next segment. You ready for it? Ready. Next segment is called 21 questions. And this is where we ask some questions. We don't have 21 questions, but these questions are so good. We might get 21 answers (laughs) because I love good in-depth questions. So you ready to jump in? Ready. What are you grateful for? I would say family support. As you've all heard, I've had quite the background of trying everything from working for the state to corporate to small business to entrepreneurship. And I really would not be successful without the family support and cheering me on in every turn or every move I made. What motivates you? Challenges and helping others. I, I'm always driven by helping others. It's kind of been within me. Kind of a downside is that I need to have a purpose in life. So when I feel like I'm not helping, I kind of feel helpless, which is frustrating. And then also the challenge. I've had some really great paying jobs, but yet I would rather be an entrepreneur fighting (laughs) for some paycheck because I want that challenge. What grounds you? Selfless service. That's all, all one of the values of the Army, but being able to put others above myself. What does success look like to you? So this was a interesting question because I was growing up I always thought you know success was that next thing right getting that college degree getting that really great job paying job getting married having the kids but as I've been getting older and experiencing life and traveling and meeting new people success is what you make it what is it for you is it that you got out of bed today is it that you accomplish this new talent or this skill For me, I'm that check the list person. I like to feel productive. If I've accomplished this, I feel success. The downside is I've always been that person that was going for the next goal and the next goal. The downside with that is every time I'd accomplish it, I'd feel empty. Like, okay, I accomplished it, but what's the next big thing? So right now I'm learning to my success is what makes me happy and kind of doing a little bit more focus on me. As you notice in my questions or answers, it's always been others. I've never believed that you had to take care of yourself before you could take care of others. That's the naive Jessica. I've realized, no, you do really have to take care of yourself because you need to have that energy or the power to be able to help others after that fact. What irritates you? Ooh. Cigarettes being thrown out the windows. So all of you smokers, I'm really sorry, but damn, can't you just put that in your own garbage? Honestly, like they're not biodegradable. <laughs> like just get thrown oh, into our lakes and No, I totally thought they were biodegradable. Oh, so frustrating. <laughs> it's seriously my biggest pet peeve. Is it? Yes. Oh, well, no, I'm not going to tell you what we do then <laughs> with our cigarettes. 
Anything else? I did also put work ethic. I do struggle with those that don't put forth the effort. But I've also acknowledged that I just have a really high expectations for myself. None that I would put on anyone else, but if it's for me, I'd also put on you, you know, to have the passion and to push forward. But at the same time, we all have things back at home. We all have other things swirling in our mind. It might not necessarily mean that they don't have that work ethic. It's just different. Very much so. What scares you? Ooh, my two biggest fears throughout my entire life is failure and being alone. Failure has always been an issue, and that means failing to be successful. Even in the military, I did a really great job on um, qualifying with my weapon. Well, I should say practice round, okay? I was shooting like no other. I was an expert. It was awesome, but it wasn't qualifying day. When we got on the range to do qualifying day, I couldn't shoot or shit. I kid you not, I was not hitting anything. And it was so frustrating because I kept on doing it over and over. So the drill sergeant was like, okay, you're going to go over here. And next thing he's like, just shoot the you know first 10. Next thing you know, I'm about to shoot. And he shot all 20 shots. And he's like, okay, you're good to go. And I'm like, no, drill sergeant, I'm not. I need to graduate. Like, I, I physically not, cannot graduate if I don't do this. And um, basically, it was that being ethical, like, no, there's no way that you just shot for me because I need to make sure that if I ever deployed, I could actually take care of my soldiers, my battle buddies. You know, I I have this big, huge integrity in my entire life, so I would never fail. And so that was the one reason why I was more mature, I guess you could say, with those other soldiers because I could not allow myself to graduate unless I did it myself. And that's been a huge hinder in my life because I'm so fearful of failing and not being perfect at everything. That's usually what makes waves with other people or stresses me out. Other big thing of why I started this entrepreneur is because I did hit burnout. And hitting burnout in your 30s is kind of weird, I think. But it now makes sense when your parents are like, got to be successful, got to get the college degree, got to do better than us and just the society. And then if you add in being a female too, that's also something I feel like I was a little naive on. I never thought that I had to fight. I was like, no, we're in this new generation. Everyone appreciates females. Everyone, I can get any job I want and I can make exactly the pay I expect. I've never not gotten paid what I wanted. That's what people tell you. Yes. They tell lots of marginalized communities that... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm just saying. no it's a hundred percent I just I always thought and then now that I'm taking a step back and I'm evaluating or becoming more aware I'm like yeah I see it and I've worked harder because I wanted to keep proving everyone wrong in a sense so failure is a huge one so being an entrepreneur is crazy why I would even take this step because this is almost like walking into failure <laughs> but that's what brings me the challenge is I won't let myself fail. And even if it's something that just lasts a few years, that's okay. I'm acknowledging that life isn't, it's short. You keep thinking you're going to live this long life and everything stays the same, but it really doesn't. It's always these different chapters. Um, So with that being said is being alone is a frustrating topic for me because as a female, your major questions asked by people are like, oh, well, do you have a boyfriend? Are you married? Do you have kids? No, 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 no. Like I don't, No, guys, I would love to find the love of my life. I haven't found it. But I've also done so many amazing things that I'm not actually alone. I might not have that companion, that relationship, but I've had so many people in my life that I've had so many different experiences with that I'm acknowledging that I'm not alone. It's just different. That's powerful. And that's honest. Thank you. You're welcome. What recharges your soul? So I would say I'm an extrovert, introvert. I absolutely love to network with people and be with people and when you have a great conversation. But being an extrovert, I actually like deep conversations. I don't like surface level ones. It's funny because I was listening to one of your episodes with Orson and he was talking about the Wisconsin Nice and we always actually have those conversations like, hey, how are you? How's your family? And those are all great conversations, but I really appreciate and enjoy when someone wants to talk a little bit more in depth. Like, don't just tell me you're, you're having a great day because most likely you're probably not. You're just saying it because you don't want to get that awkwardness. But like, no, tell me, really, I'd love to listen. I'd love to see if I could help it in any way. 
but that brings me smiles whenever I can kind of network with someone. But with that being said, also being an entrepreneur and doing events and parties, I am tapped out after an event or two. Um, I'm like, whoo, okay, that was a lot of people. I have my all, all my energy I need to recharge, and I love being outside. Anytime I go hiking or go see the ocean, you just <laughs> – Sounds like my dog. <laughs> yeah, that that is Bosco the podcast dog deciding <laughs> that he's going to insert himself into the episode right now. <laughs> it's okay. It reminds me of Duchess to totally oh, do that. Oh, I won't have a Zoom call or a phone call all day, and then the one time I do, and that's when I need to play. That's why I know I go outside. <laughs> <laughs> so no worries there. But yeah, so recharging is yes, people, but then also having that alone time and just being grounded more in nature and realizing that this world has so many beautiful things to just appreciate. You are an introvert side. You have an introvert side. I get that because I do too. And, you know, as much as I do enjoy being around people, once I do that, I'm exhausted. And I have to, I've got to do the recharge thing also. Recenter, recharge. Mm -hmm. Right? How do you define love? I would say putting someone else and their needs above your own. It's kind of like that whole selfless service, making a commitment. I think there's different types of love, right? You love your parents, um, love your friends, but really generally caring about someone. And if you aren't maybe, I don't know, a concert fan, but you know your best friend absolutely loves going to a concert, you know, sacrificing that moment and being able to put on that smile and really try to get in is kind of what I define love. Last question. What is the most memorable life lesson you've learned from a parent, guardian, or mentor? So I'm going to be vulnerable. One of my mentors is Barb, and she runs your nonprofit of Center for Suicide Awareness. It's interesting because many people think that I'm a very confident person. I do present myself pretty well public speaking, but I kind of lack self-confidence, actually. I'm not perfect. I'm not enough. And when I was going through my transition of getting out of the military, changing careers, not sure where I belong. As I mentioned, I would love to find that significant other, and it's kind of a pain point in my life. I met Barb because I was going through a really rough time. And it was during COVID, which was even better because she didn't let COVID stop from seeing me. And she gave me the shirt, and it's interesting because the shirt is spelled backwards, so that way I can only read it looking in the mirror when I'm looking at myself. And it says, you're loved, worthy, and enough. And I've resonated with that because I feel like we don't talk about it enough, but everyone is battling their own demons, I guess, inside. And how do you make yourself feel loved, worthy, and enough? I've always identified with my job. And I think that's why I was losing my sense of purpose was every job I had was ending at some point, And now where do I belong? When I was serving the military, it was serving, you know, bigger cause. And now I'm just in Nina in the small town area, but I don't have a family. I'm not supporting anyone. I'm not, what do I need to do? And so life lesson is realizing that you have lots of family and support. And if you have any type of religion or you believe in higher power, um, God, but at the end of the day, it's you and you are against yourself. And I'm my own worst critic. And I have to continue to remind myself that I am loved, I am worthy, and I am enough. And it's okay that it's even just me telling myself that. Thank you. Next segment. All right. Okay. The next segment is word association and word associations where I'm going to say some words to you and you're going to tell us what comes to your mind and explain it a little bit. And we have a tradition on the cash and that is this. We start with the same word every episode and that is the word of happiness. That is the word of unity. That is the word of friendship. That is the, it might be the greatest word of all words. And that word is food. I said family. Food brings people together. Um, it's just like Fanny's episode, why she does the bubble tea. It's bringing people together. It's where conversations take place. It's where all those family traditions happen. It could be a Thanksgiving dinner or for our family on Black Fridays, we don't go shopping. and We do Christmas cookie baking and decorating all day long. You don't go out there in the chaos. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. You know what? It's not that bad anymore. It's not like it used to be. I, I actually miss old Black Friday when it used to be like American Gladiators, the TV <laughs> show. Like it was really good back then. It's not like that anymore. Yeah. Food is family. Cocktail or beer? In my stage of life, I would consider this networking. 100% business after hours. Anytime you're trying to connect with other small businesses, let's grab a cocktail. Let's have a conversation. It loosens it up. It just, I don't know, opens up those gates of conversations. You got a favorite? Moscow Mules. Yeah? Yeah. Just the plain ones? Or, you know, I've started seeing these flavored Moscow Mules. Oh, I will try places. all the flavors. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try all the flavors. <laughs> all the flavors. I've done the peach. Uh, there was one rosemary, cranberry one. There's been a blackberry one. Mm -hmm. I've had yes. a blackberry one. It was fantastic. But it's got to be in the copper mug. I will literally ask the bartender if they have copper mugs. If they don't, then I will get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's all about, it has to have the full aesthetic. It does. Okay. It, it does make a difference. I I know it sounds strange, but it does. And I will I I will even give the bartender I'm like here's my credit card, here's my ID. I won't steal the copper mug. Just please put put it in the, <laughs> copper, mug. In the copper mug. No, I think you're right. It, it does something about those those mugs hold the cold really really well, and I do think it makes a difference. Yes. So I'm with you on that. Okay, Moscow Mules. Shop local. All about support small businesses. I can't tell you how much I've learned by starting my own business. I now understand why coffee is $5 a cup. And it's just people don't realize that small businesses, just like big businesses, have to pay for their marketing. They have to pay for their website, the stupid credit card processing fees, your insurance, the inventory. It's just amazing. So definitely shop local. Support your small businesses. Amazon's great. I do use them. But you really got to support the mom and pop stores that are really just trying to build your community up and giving you something a little bit more special, a little bit more personalized. Where's our favorite place? Ooh, the chalice is mine. Yeah? Best Rubens I've ever had. I can't. No, no one can compare. And you got to go to Learning Lunchtime. I love when they give you the little desserts. Okay. <laughs> I'm a sweetie. I, I haven't been to the Chalice in, all, in quite a while. I mean, I've been there, and they do make a great sandwich. But it's not a place that I, you know, it's not one of the first places that tend to come to mind when you're thinking of the places in Oshkosh, just kind of because it's, it's kind of off the beaten path a little. It is. Yep. I think it's more of my favorite because it's also a place I used to go when, you know, when I was younger. And obviously, I just kind of back into the area. I do wish there their restaurant was larger. I do think it's a little too small, but there's nothing I got to do about Well, the one thing is the chalice is usually packed, or at least every time I've gone for a lunch, it's always, mm -hmm. like, full to the hilt, so. Yeah. I just love how they have a side. It's not your standard chips or fries. I mean, you can get pasta or the tomatoes or cucumbers, and I don't know, I feel like I'm eating healthier. <laughs> not really, but. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Concert. I put fun. I absolutely just love live music. You, it's interesting. I love live music, but it's not like I'm always paying to go to a concert. Just, I don't know, just got that feeling about you're in summer and everyone's free and happy and joyful. The sun is out and everyone's just enjoying and dancing. Although I do miss that. I kind of think that um, we've lost that generation of like actual dancing, but we'll get there. It will get there. Maybe, maybe it'll think. change things around. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I don't know if actual dancing still happens because I'm way too old to go in the club and find out. <laughs> I mean, you can get dance lessons, but it's just not the same. Like, I absolutely adore when I can hang out with my grandparents. Oh, man, they're up in their 80s, almost 90s. But they still go dancing and oh, that's cool. just twirl them around. And So you single men out there, if you know how to dance, I'm sold. You're sold? <laughs> I'm sold. Okay. There we go. What's the last fun concert you went to? Road Trip. They're local. I love that they bring back the classics. Streaming. I put social media. It's nowadays, you know, streaming podcasts, streaming YouTube, Facebook, the Reels. I mean, you name it, it's out there. What do you stream? Um, 
I'm a big Netflix Hulu person. <laughs> it's really bad. Once I get into a series and I'm like dead set on that, like Outlander, oh my goodness, I could not get anything done. I could not. You gotta finish it. Oh, I gotta finish it. And it's like, oh, it's eight seasons worth. <laughs> I get that. My wife has a rule. Like, it can't have more than two seasons or else she won't start it. That's a good rule. Because she's like, no, nah, I can't. You know, because I'm gonna find myself hooked on it. And then it's gonna suck up my whole week. And I actually get it. But I'm always just like, I'm a disciplined person. So you can just do it in the bite sizes. You know, I do remember... TV prior to all of this on demandness <laughs> when you actually had to wait an entire week for the next episode, you know. <laughs> it's really great that you still have the discipline. I feel like I got out of the military and it went the opposite. You went the opposite way. Yep. I mean, I love the convenience of it, and and if I told you I'd never binged anything, that would be a big fat lie. <laughs> I have of course binged things, but uh there's actually there's something that recently okay there's two shows that recently I was watching okay there's Murders in the Building and Murders in the Building which was uh, I think it was on Hulu I think it was on Hulu it's either Hulu or Amazon and that was only releasing it every week so you watch an episode you had to wait a week for the episode they might have released the first two or three together right so that was one and then I was watching this game show called The Floor and The Floor was every week so. It was every Tuesday, and so then, and I love that because what I do then is I won't even watch it on Tuesday. I wait for Friday. So then when I come home from work on Friday and I'm prepping for a weekend, I'm just like, I just want to blob out, and I don't want to think about anything serious. I have that series, that one episode waiting for me that I can just veg out and eat pizza and, and watch that. I, I do miss where the episodes are still going, you have to wait for the week because then you can end up make it like a little party too. It's something to anticipate. It's something that throughout my work day I look forward to. Like, oh, I can't wait to get home and watch that episode of said thing. And that, I don't know, it, it makes my Friday a better Friday. Entrepreneurship. Work and passion. Starting your own business is a lot of work. It looks glamorous. Yes, you get to have your own schedule. Yes, you have the flexibility, but seriously, if you're on vacation, you're not making money. And I can attest to that. I've been on a couple trips the last few weeks um, because my family's like, oh, you have all the time in the world. I mean, I'm available, but I'm, I'm missing out on some stuff. So, you know, it's some long days, but what makes it work is because you have the passion. You love it. It doesn't feel like work because you're doing what you enjoy. Last word, diversity. So diversity for me is a, basically a variety of cultures. For me, I feel like it's more of the traveling aspect. As I mentioned, I've been to 12 countries, and those were actually not related to military. Um, it was all for pleasure and just trying to see the world in a sense. I love the hidden gems and meeting new people. That's one reason why I joined the military. It's one reason why I went to college and I love to try new things because I love to learn about others. And I think that's what makes the world go round. We shouldn't all be the same. What fun would that be? I know that unfortunately America's were considered the melting pot but I don't think we're doing as great of a job of highlighting. I know bits and pieces we are to highlight the different cultures, but if you think about it, I don't know, what do, what's our background? I feel like we have nothing to share for it. When I went to Japan, it was just like mind-boggling for me. Like the, the Buddhist religion and the robots in South Korea and the different dresses. I don't know, it's just interesting because like, What's our history? It's just being jerks. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> being the powerful one. <laughs> we, we, we've been that sometimes. Yeah. So just diversity is just being able to explore, um, have different cultures, have difference of opinions. And the hope was that we would all be able to have conversations and be open and respectful. But unfortunately, when it comes to politics, we're not there yet. Um, I don't know if we ever will be, unfortunately. Uh, I don't know, and I, I'm with you. It, it's not looking good, is what I'm going to say. No, it's no. actually looking like we're headed in the wrong direction. So, okay. And that was Word Association. We are ready to jump into the next segment, and that is the Kosh Hidden 
gems. And in the Kashian gems, it's the opportunity for our guests to share a hidden gem with us. It doesn't have to be, um, it could be something everyone knows about, but maybe there's some details about it that people don't know, or maybe it's something you don't think a lot of people know. And you are not limited by the borders of the Kash itself. That hidden gem can be anywhere in the region. So, so my hidden gem is the Braywood Inn. I never knew this existed until last summer. I was one of the Miss Wisconsin judges, and that's where we were stationed all week long. I thought this was like a volunteer thing for like a week. And, oh, no, it's a whole week. You're not allowed to go home. <laughs> You're kind of on lockdown. I felt like I was in basic training. But the Braywood Inn is just down the road from Main Street off of Central, um, right next to the City Hall cutest boutique and they call it boutique because it used to be a bed and breakfast but in order to make it a little bit more cost effective or easier it's now a boutique where they have the more of the continental items but the rooms all come with your own bathroom it's just elaborate and gorgeous um, so for all of you travelers out there that would love to check out new historic buildings or want an airbnb or just a night away i would definitely recommend braywood inn it's kind of like wow, this is here. You don't really feel like in your Wisconsin. You're in a different state. Um, but really cool little place to check out. Okay. I didn't know about that. Where is it at? So off of Main Street, if you go. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I think I know. Is it by Merritt? Off of like Main Street and Merritt Street? Um, no? so I'd say police station, You're right. city hall, and it's right next door. And then actually, oh, in front of the old Thunderbird Cafe. Thunder, right? Is the third Thunderbird? Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm right in front of it, in a sense. I think I know the place you're talking about, but I don't think I ever knew the name of it. Yeah, and it's actually kind of hard. Like, it's got really great greenery and whatnot, but it's kind of hidden, in a sense. But there is a sign, but it's almost because it's a it's a maroon sign, so it's not as eye-catching. But once you know it's there, you can't miss it. You can't miss it. <laughs> okay. Braywoodian, we need to check that out. Okay. At this time... We are going to take a small commercial break. Did you know there are children in the Fox Valley in need of hearing aids, but their parents struggle to provide them because of lack of insurance or high copays? I am Juliette Sturkins, audiologist and board member of Here in the Fox Cities, and proud that this small local nonprofit organization has helped fund hearing aids for some 30 kids. Your donation would help more children hear. Visit hereinthefoxcities.org to learn more and to see their smiles. Every child deserves to hear. All right, we are back. And let me just say, uh, for all of those out there, those nonprofits out there, if you would like to have a commercial on the cash, I am willing to give you a free commercial. Just reach out to me at askthekosh at gmail.com. Once again, that's askthekosh at gmail.com. And let us know if you have an interest to have a commercial on the cash. Also, at this time, I'd also like to just go back and say this episode is sponsored by Sturgeon Spirits Craft Distillery, the Kasha's newest tradition. Big shout out to the team out there. I hope to see you later on today. I, want, I would like to sit down in my favorite. I have, I have a favorite seat there. <laughs> do you? Yeah. What do you do when someone takes it? Oh, well, then I moved to another seat, and it's still my favorite. As okay. long as I got a bite, if I got a bacon sandwich, they're all my favorites. I wasn't sure if you'd be like, excuse me, this is my favorite seat. Could you? Well, I can tell. Well, here's the thing. The place is getting super popular right now, and so, like, there's there's time. So sometimes I walk in there with the wife, and seats are available at the bar. I usually like to sit at a bar. I don't like to sit at a table. And then sometimes we're walking in there, and the place is almost packed. So then you got to get in where you fit in. Mm -hmm. And it's all about the timing of it all. There's ebbs and flows to it. So, but for the Kosh listener out there, just go out there and experience it. And while you're there, have a nice Kosh cocktail because they are fabulous. All right. We are ready for our next segment. And this is my favorite segment here on the Kosh. And that is story time. And that's an opportunity for our guests to share a story with the Kosh listeners and me. 
So, and that story can be about absolutely anything. Jessica, what do you got for us? This was a tough one. I felt like all these stories were just flooding in uh, my brain. But I think I'm going to go with the one that probably means the most to me because it was quite the experience. So for you listeners out there, part of the military, I guess, atmosphere, there is what's called a Best Warrior competition. This competition is for lower enlisted, um, so you're one through four, and then um, your staff sergeants, sergeants, basically NTOs, non-commissioned officers, so it's like your managers. So I was in Virginia at our annual training for the week, and I was called in by Command Sergeant Major, and he was rambling on about, I don't know, needing strong females, and there's this competition, and he wants me to go, and I'm standing at pre rest just listening and not really sure what he's talking about, but, you know, you just say yes. Anyways, he had said, you know, will you represent our our battalion and will you compete in the best warrior competition? And I, of course, you don't say no. You said yes, Sergeant Major. And um, I was dismissed. I go back to the barracks. I Googled this and I'm like, oh, shoot. I just said yes to what? So this competition is against other fellow soldiers and it ranges from everything in the military throwing grenades, knowing different smoke signals. If someone had a bullet wound, what do you do? Um, writing an essay, your physical fitness, being a, or approaching the board, which is kind of like an interview. I mean, everything in the military. So, of course, I was just like, you got to be kidding me. I have not been in the military very long, and I have two months to prepare physically, mentally. <laughs> spiritually all the things so the reason why I'm telling you this story is it's my biggest accomplishments it's something that um, I felt pretty honored to be asked it was a huge challenge I actually to be honest learned probably more in that learning and competing than I did in basic because the drill sergeants or well not drill sergeants the sergeant majors they're the ones that put this on the one command sergeant major he was just phenomenal he told us like hey this is a competition however what we really want to know is what do you know or what do you not know what are we doing wrong what can we do to improve because if you are our top soldiers and you don't know x y and z then we obviously are not training our soldiers the way we need to be um, and i just thought that was so impactful and that was powerful and it was neat. I was one of two females that competed uh, against, there was 20 of us total in the non-commissioned officers. Yeah, it was just a phenomenal experience. You slept maybe five hours in three days. Uh, <laughs> you uh, just had to go with the punches. And even if you didn't succeed, you just had to give it your all. And like I said, I probably learned more than I did well. I was runner up on the first one, but I did get to go on because the gentleman that beat me he rather go to what's called warrior leadership training. And so that allowed me to compete in the next round, which was great because I learned more in that round. And it was not as much of a cluster. The first one was not very organized. <laughs> so my planning uh, skills were, you know, kicking in gear and I was just critiquing them left and right in my head. Like, what are you guys doing? This is awful. <laughs> <laughs> but so that, that's the one funny thing is... So for those of you don't, that don't necessarily know, most of the time, uh, if you have a college degree, you're supposed to or most likely assumed to be an officer. And I didn't go on the officer route because I want my, lo my college loans pay back and you can't do, you have to do one or the other. And my goal was eventually to become an officer. You, not to my own horn, but many of the officers or leaders of mine would normally talk to me like an officer or kind of question because I really was at that planning level. But when I enlisted, yes, I want my loans pay back, but I also talked to a lot of soldiers and I wanted to figure out like, what is your best, biggest tips? And they said, be the grunt, you know, get down in there and gain that experience because you want to learn because now you can be a better leader, right? You've done the thing and now you can, instead of just barking orders, you're demonstrating. Right. And they also respect it. Yes. They will take that order from you better. Yeah. So it was interesting to be a non-commissioned officer competing and you can't, they don't have that for officers. There is no competition. So it was really a great experience. A very low percentage do, does it. And um, I just met a lot of great fellow soldiers, got a two-star coin, a challenge coin. It's my highest, I guess, <laughs> award. 
it was just a really good feeling. Um, mostly because like I wasn't winner, but I was the winner in the sense that I did it. Um, and I didn't let it get down on me when I screwed up something or I didn't know that smoke signal or, oh, I was flustered. Land nav gave me a run for its money. Oh, that was the story. Okay. So part of this competition is land navigation. So they give me the, the coordinates and I'm thinking I'm rocking this. I'm not really certain, but I'm, I'm, I got this. So I come in and they're like, oh, great job. Half an hour later, like, hey, Sergeant Williams, we're really sorry, but we gave you the wrong coordinates. So you have an hour to go back and get these right coordinates. Oh, okay, sure. So I go back, do all the coordinates, come back, and I, like, just got back in time because you had to be there by a certain time, and I got there two minutes before. I'm like, okay, we're good to go. All right, so we go on with the competition. Nope. Hey, Sergeant Williams, we're really sorry. We gave you the wrong coordinates again. But we're just going to give you a go because we clearly screwed up. So I have no idea to this day if I actually am good at land navigation or not. (laughs) So that's my story. That is hilarious. And yet, not all that surprising, to be perfectly honest. (laughs) These things happen. Yeah. That is pretty cool. And it's pretty cool that you got to participate in that competition. Yeah. That's a big damn deal. And I'm a little jealous about your two-star coin. Thanks. Oh, so next time uh, you'll be buying me a drink, huh? Uh, well, I will say I don't have anything near a two-star coin. <laughs> Not even close. I won't even tell you what my highest is now that I know you got a two-star, so there you go. I, we're not even going to talk about it. I'm just going to go ahead and buy you that drink. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now, it is, oh, first of all, thank you for that story. <laughs> And now, every single time it makes me happy. I know, I like that. See? And what that does is it signifies to the Kosh listeners, it is time for the topic of the week. Our topic of the week is chosen by our guests 99.9% of the time. This week is no different. So Jessica, what is our topic of the week? What determines a party, event, or celebration? Oh, okay. I'm excited about this. Yes, let's, let's go. So as I mentioned, my motto is elevating life special moments. The biggest part of reason why I created Whimsical Celebrations is congratulations to all those brides out there. However, I want to make sure that everyone feels celebrated. It doesn't have to be just a wedding. It could be that you got a promotion. It could just be the fact that you and your girls want to go out. Um, It's celebrating those milestones of hitting 60 or that baby shower, it could be anything and everything. And that's what I'm all about is celebrating all those special moments and you don't have to be engaged or married to have that celebration. Tell us more (laughs) because you you set us up and (laughs) you are right. Why? Okay. We talked a little bit earlier about like why you would want to have someone come in, but explain that further and tell us, Tell us a win. Like, when have you seen, what is something you've planned where you know that you planning it made the difference versus the person trying to plan it themselves? I would, there's many different examples, but one I will highlight is a 20th family reunion. So this client has been doing a family reunion every single year for 19 years, and it was all due to her father's ask. Um, before her father passed away, she he had asked her to keep the family together, and so she would do this family reunion. And she's a fantastic woman, very powerful, has all the planning, definitely can do it, but hard to put the family together in the sense of really trying to stretch and get everyone to find dates that are available and have the family converse. If any of you have large families, you might see it all the time where you might have those little clicks or those conversations aren't easy. It's like pulling teeth in a sense. And so she said, hey, we're doing this 20th and I really want to wow the family members. So the family members had no idea that she had hired me and we really went all out. So I used Cedar Yard Greetings to have a big sign that said, 20th family reunion, Martell family reunion, to kind of welcome the guests, to wow them. 
And then I introduce them by asking everyone to write their name on a leaf. Um, So obviously, because it's a family reunion, I made it very much like family tree oriented. It was taking place in October. So everyone put their name on there and I had to draw from the hat. Oh, you guys love those force icebreakers. But by me drawing those names, it forced them to be in different groups than they normally would be. And because I'm not the family member, they're more apt to listen (laughs) and follow along. (laughs) Bruh, facts. So we mixed it up. We had my personalized life-size Jenga. And when I say personalized, I write up certain questions and tasks and actions where they're all slipped into each block. So when you pull out the block, you also pull the piece of paper. It might say you as the individual who pulled the block, like challenge someone to a thumb war or might say choose two people to give your best Elvis impression or might say everyone everyone spell out love with your bodies or everyone share a favorite childhood memory basically the whole idea is that way everyone get involved so again you can be an introvert or an extrovert and still have some fun um, without feeling like you're on the spot we also did pinata karate chop so what? Yes. So as adults, you know, we tend to forget that we're a kid or we want to be a kid and just let loose. Um, so you put winter gloves on, you put the blindfold on, and you have to do a karate chop sounds as you try to hit or karate chop the pinata. You don't need the stick anymore. It's hilarious to watch, and it's great <laughs> to do yourself. Um, I have life-size kerplunk, and then we also had, like, little craft bags where you had a family shield, and they had only supplies, and not every bag had the necessary tape or glue so it forced you to go find other teams like oh could I borrow your tape or glue and it kind of intertwined so this was the best family reunion that they said they had and it was because I branched them out yes it was kind of forced mandatory fun but it was very memorable because it was different and that's when I say what determines a party is when do you want to get outside of your bubble When do you want to maybe experience something else and make it more memorable? Yes, you're going to have the baby showers and the bridal showers and the engagement parties and the weddings, but are any of those memorable? If they are, it was probably because something was different or unique. Brides actually laugh at me because I tell women for the most part, I said, "Um, does anyone actually want to go to a bridal shower? And they're like, and they don't answer. And I'm like, no. We're, we're, we're going because we're out of out of obligation. And then they all chuckle. And that's the truth. So why and when do you celebrate? It's when you want to get together and have fun and let loose and maybe feel a little goofy because it's a free judgment zone. So within that answer, you talked about what's a party. And I think you just ended with what's a celebration. So the thing you haven't talked about yet is what's an event. <laughs> An event would be much larger. Um, so last year I assisted Fanny with the Dragon Boat Races. Um, another event, actually in October, the state human resources have asked me to help with their convention. Any event is, I would say, on a larger scale. City, state, conference, nonprofit. I've done a handful of fundraisers because the biggest part with fundraisers is the marketing piece. How do you get the word out and how can you get new clientele to donate because we've probably all been there when you're doing um, fundraisers you're always hitting up the same people over and over again and at some point you kind of start feeling guilty or those people are feeling pretty annoyed like it's just one of those things of how do you expand and that's kind of where you use that social media aspect so what do you think is the biggest well I always like to ask what do you think the biggest myth is that people have about throwing their own stuff Because I I do think, like, there's a certain, when you have a planner, like, they've done it a lot. So there's all this stuff that they know to think of. And when you haven't, you think you know, but you don't know. And then you forget a bunch of stuff. And you're like, oh, wow, I never even thought about that. Like, does the venue have electrical plugs? (laughs) I mean, seriously, it's simple (laughs) stuff like that. So what can you share? I would definitely say it's the little details um, that you'll tend to forget if you do it on your own. Sometimes the myth or assumption is if you do it yourself, it's cheaper. It might be if you are really crafty and can come up with all of your decorations, but if you don't necessarily know the right vendors or I guess those options out there, it's not. Or, yeah, you might save money, but you're not saving time because you're too busy Googling and reading and reading and then negotiating back and forth where you could just pay for someone to already deal with that aspect. 
some things that people forget is simple as ice, ice for their beverages. They didn't think about it. Or that's so true. Can't tell you how many times I had to call and be like, can you pick up some ice on the way? Yes. <laughs> it's always that. Or, okay, this is the funny one. I've had many parties myself and I'll always say, bring a dish to pass. This younger generation, anyone below my age, I'm 36, all bring bags of chips. I was going to say they bring the chips or paper products. Right. So like, or, or, or baked goods, which are great, but like it's the Walmart, whatever, not, not your local bakery that's like legit, you know, really good baked goods. So now I'm like, you have a potluck of chips. Good job, guys. Not that I'm a much cook, but like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of diversify it. So when you have that event planner, they usually try to encourage you, like, shop local. Make sure you have at least the this, this, and this. Figure out how many people you want, um, the venue. The biggest question for most people is like, okay, well, I need a venue for this amount of many people. And that's actually a hard one. That's a lot of research, and they only want it for so much. Well, venues are pricey. Actually, the downside for, as an event planner or one that comes to decorate is when my client – books the venue, and then hires me. And then I'm told, well, you have a half an hour to decorate. Mm. No, 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 I need two hours. But, well, we didn't want to pay for, I'm like, well, I, I don't know if I could get you the elaborateness you want in a half an hour. So that's the one negative working with different venues is that they charge by the hour. And, of course, I want to do what's right by my client, but I also need the time. To be able to do it, and then they don't want to. I've never thought about that, though, but that's such a good point. And you are right. This is the chip generation. <laughs> My big thing that we bring to the party is we will bring tortilla chips and salsa, homemade salsa. At, that. at least it's homemade. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you don't know about us, look, I might. Do you do salsa? My mom does. I don't. <laughs> you, you don't eat it? Oh, I eat it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, is yeah. it hot? Do you do heat? Yes. Okay, then I might send you home with some of Timber's amazing, fabulous salsa. You will understand. Yeah. All right. That, I just think there's a misunderstanding about party planning and event planning and, like, really the, how much stress having someone else organize the things for you so you can just show up and actually enjoy it. Yeah, there's a lot lot of details. I mean, yes, you got the venue, the decorations, the food, the entertainment, the music. It is as simple as, like when I say I host, so most of the time people don't fully understand what does hosting mean. That means I'm going to welcome your guests. If it's during winter, I might take their coats. I might show them where the restrooms are. I will tell them where all the activities are. If it's me coordinating various different vendors, I had a 75th surprise birthday party. I was coordinating with the DJ, the caterer, Ash Posh events that does like the vintage china, all the photos, myself, I had cupcakes from a different vendor. I had a uh, the Liquor Valley come in. Like I had at least 10 different vendors I'm coordinating, all trying to come in, and it was all because I try to work with the clients and their budget. I am nowhere expensive, but I'm nowhere cheap either. Kind of have to you pay what you pay for, I'll, although actually most of my clients said I'm, I'm a little too cheap, so i got to work on that. But, yeah, you're really working with all of the little details and making sure everyone has a good time and that nothing is missed. Especially with the 75th, I knew that we had an older generation, and, oh, it was the one day it snowed. And so I had to, like, okay, now we need to get this parking lot cleared. Like, hey, venue, are we on this? Um, we have a couple people with some wheelchairs. So you got to think of everyone that's involved. And another big part one is who's gluten-free, who's vegan-free, how do you have that labeled um, and really making sure that that doesn't cross? Those details are the things that truly set an experience for an individual. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think about that and it's a make or break per individual. And when you're dealing with a, lo a large crowd, you know, what one feels on one side of the room because they got the piece of cake with the good frosting. <laughs> And the other one didn't, and they'll go home and tell two different stories about that experience. Uh, I feel like having an event planner helps to smooth out the rating system so everyone can feel like they had a great experience. Yeah, exactly. I mean, at, at the end of the day, 
you know, you're responsible for yourself. Everyone can choose to have fun or not have fun. But most of the time, at least in my experience, I feel like I have some magic that really captures people or at least get them intrigued a bit or maybe participate than they normally would have participated or had a conversation that they probably wouldn't have. So at least at the end of the day, I really feel like I see people leaving smiling and just kind of like, huh, that was actually fun. Maybe, maybe I would do it again. What, where did the name come from? Oh, so I was on Facebook asking family and friends with their suggestions. And um, my old roommate said, paranormal jambalaya. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> and I was like, Pajet, I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. Why, why paranormal? But okay, well, well, but I like the jambalaya. Okay, well, look at it. I'm like, oh, jambalaya, Jessica, jambalaya. Maybe I could come with a word, a W name, Jessica Williams, J, jambalaya, something. And I came across whimsical. To be honest, I've never, I've never heard of that word, never knew that word. And I'm like, oh, I like that. Whimsical, fanciful. So then I started looking up what that meant, and I came across a peacock, and I was sold. Which is funny because I grew up with peacocks. I lived on a hobby farm. My grandparents had peacocks. My bathroom is actually a peacock theme. I didn't really think I had a thing for peacocks, but it all made sense. So whimsical is fanciful where the peacock represents that I can do beautiful and elegant parties. Um, The decorations, making everything smooth, but then the backsplash is to represent that art party. I can do creative and outside-the-box thinking. That's actually where my heart is. If anything's themed, like 80s or 70s, things that are just out there um, is what I prefer, but I can do both, and that's why you have the peacock and the paint splash. And I went with celebrations because I didn't like party and event because that's just too standard. I have to use it because that's what Google uses, and that's how I get known. Uh, when you type in Google, you're looking for an event planner, a party planner, but I wanted celebrations because of the aspect of you can celebrate anything and everyone. It doesn't have to be a specific birthday party. Um, a highlight I do is murder mystery dinners. What? Mm-hmm. Now, though, that sounds cool. For real? For real. Yep. Okay. Yes, I basically do all the work for you. So I, you give me the list of people you'd like to be invited. I create the invitations. I mail the invitations out by assigning everyone a character. You have at least a month, hopefully a month notice, where you can find your costume to fit that person. And then I come into your home or a venue, depending on what you're looking for, and I bring everything. The backdrop, all the dinnerware um, that matches the theme, whether it's Mardi Gras, 1920s, disco, theater, you name it. I bring all the decorations, all the dishware. The only thing I don't provide is the food. I can assist you though if you want it catered in and then I'm I'm the host. It's about a four hours if you want the full time because I really want to make sure that you're invested in your character and having fun but then you also get a break in between so you get to eat and mingle with your friends and just have fun and then you get back into your character mode and finding the mystery um, and the props and everyone gets a little prize that's correlated to fit the theme and I always have a prize for best actor best detective and best costume as well that actually you've got me intrigued like that would be so so cool And that could be for anything. It doesn't have to be a birthday party. It's just like, hey, my friends and I, it's almost like you're painting wine nights. Oh, no, that's a Friday or a Saturday. That would be a fun Saturday. Is there anything coming up new that you're thinking about? You're an entrepreneur, right? So you're always, I want to say, you're probably always in a place of transformation. Yes. And so is there anything that's sitting and lingering in the head that you're hopeful about in the future or something that you would like to it, that's okay enough to share <laughs> at this point. I might be digging too deep, but what's on the horizon? I'm all about personalization. I really want to make sure that every party and event, every celebration is unique and tailored to fit you. The downside to that piece, though, is it's not cost effective for me. So I'll, I've also acknowledged that a lot of people maybe want just a box that's curated for them. So if I could come up with a variety of themes where it's like, okay, here's a mountain baby theme that you can run for 50 bucks type of deal. So something that is easy, that I can store, that can be reusable in various different capacities, but also be kind of a boxed up. A lot of just super simple. That way you're 
still getting maybe the similar price to Amazon, but you're also not storing all that paper product and it's more substantial. Because that's the other thing I, I don't want to provide just paper products. I want to give you something more substantial. Um, like this mountain theme I'm talking about is actually wood blocks that were painted. The disco theme I do, I actually, it's legit vinyl records that I found um, through Facebook Marketplace and I was searching a long time. Like I try to find more of those vintage, unique props that actually fit. Um, so making it easier, cheaper, I guess, for you to have a box if that's what you're looking for, if it's just more of a contained. The other major one that I was kind of going to dive into is... Are you already planning a party, but you would need those extra pair of hands? Meaning you already have the decorations, you have the place, you don't necessarily want an event planner, but oh my goodness, your husband maybe isn't the best one to help out, or you're too busy with the kids, and you Be just... easy on those husbands. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. I know, sorry. No. <laughs> Whatever the case may be, I think some of those parents um, sometimes might feel like they're single parents when they're not. Or it's just literally you have a lot to do. You have to clean the house. You're going to have your twin's birthday party. You're going to have 40-some people over, and you're too busy cooking while the husband or wife is actually dealing with the kids. Wouldn't it be nice to just have someone show up to your house and be able to know where to put things? That's what I can offer. So you have everything ready. I just show up, and I have my hands, and you say, here, I need to take care of the food. Will you decorate? Sure, I'll take the decorations you have and I'll start putting it together. Maybe you have tables and chairs that need to be put out. That way you don't have to have the all-inclusive event planner. Again, I tell many people, I will do as little or as much as my client needs because I want to make sure that I'm that helping hand for you. I think that is genius, actually, because I can see that. And actually... And what you're talking about, that'll save marriages. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to call it that. That's the marriage saving package. <laughs> you know, because that extra person to help do this. Yeah. Yep. And it might be birthdays, but the one that's probably upcoming is graduations. Graduations. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which is another thing I can definitely do. I got graduation decorations and I can take care of it. Um, what I have heard is as you're, your child is a senior, there's just a lot going on. It's the last thing you want to do because you're just exhausted by the end of the year. Like, right, all those colleges, searching and whatnot. Oh, colleges, if they're in sports, oh, my God, if they're in sports and they're running around associated with that and every, every other activity they have, and if you've got multiples, then you're doing it in multiple places. Yeah. yeah. So just hire me to come in, help put all those photos and those – athletic um letters up and put the tables together and i can put the food together i'm just not you know not licensed for cooking or anything but i can definitely make it look elaborate and you had that extra pair of hands that's that's pretty fantastic okay all right well gosh listeners you heard about this amazing resource and jessica Who's just an amazing person. That is uh, pretty fantastic. And I'm already thinking like my next set, I, I would have actually enjoyed having that extra set of hands. And I've been thinking about it as you say it throughout the episode, because uh, I can't tell you how helpful that is. Cause even if you and your partner are on the same page running around, you're still all running around. Mm-hmm. So if you still had another set of hands or if you actually had somebody coordinating you, so as you two run around and that person was to tell you where you, what you all should be worried about or thinking about, even that would be helpful. So, okay. Is there any last things you would like to share with the Kosh listeners about your topic of the week? The only thing I would leave you with is don't wait for tomorrow. If you want to get together with someone and go for a hike, um, you don't have to have a party. Just enjoy life while you have it. Life is short. And just really embrace and enjoy um, those around you that you love. That is really good advice. And um, I don't know if that should have been your words of wisdom at the end. But you know <laughs> what? We're going to let that go. And we are going to start winding up this episode. All right. So, Kosh listeners, I just want to say thank you to Jessica. But to you, I want to say thank you, thank you, 
Thank you. Thank you for spending time with us. Thank you for giving us your minds and ears. Thank you for caring about another amazing person within our community doing great things, helping to make this a better place for all of us to live in. Uh, We are a work in progress. We are trying to become the number one podcast in Wisconsin. Yes, that is our goal. We are not messing around. We are the people's podcast. That's what I would like to say. And I need your help to be able to be better. So how are you going to help me? Well, y'all got ideas out there. Let me know what we could do to be better. There's people out there who would like to be guests. Love to have you. There's people out here who are good at making connections. So tell me who you would like to have as a guest here on the Kosh. And I will reach out and we'll try to make that happen. Also, the other thing is I need some help from you in this whole journey to become the number one podcast in Wisconsin. And that is this. While you're listening to this episode right now, take a moment, go hit your subscribe button and become a subscriber to the Kosh. Also, you know, they have this thing where you can fill out, you know, reviews. You've heard of this before. So fill out a review on the Kosh. Let us know what we're doing, good, bad, or indifferent, how we can do better, how we can improve you hitting subscribe and you filling out reviews what that does is that creates positive analytics for us and the better our analytics are the more places that this podcast gets shared Uh, we think we have something very very special going on here we would like to get in front of more eyes and ears and you know we do have the main purpose here of creating community and we think we do a pretty good job at doing that so Help us help make this region, this community, the Kosh itself, a better place to live amongst us all. So that's it for that. Now, on to the really good stuff, and that is (laughs) shout-out time. (laughs) Jessica, what do you got? All right, so I got a couple. Coots Lures is my dad's business. He is a funny guy, so you'll definitely see him. He, he always says he's TikTok famous. And uh, the reason why is because my brother uh, does his social media, which is now Watch Williams Media. Um, so shout out to those two because they're the ones that helped me start my brand. They kind of encouraged me to start doing the social media before Whimsical Celebrations even became a business as a planner, I wanted to hit all those, you know, planning notes. And they're like, no, you got to build that brand and then the rest will follow. And um, they're pretty legit on that. And then Simply Country Barn and Venue 404 are great venues I've worked with, and they've been really supportive on my business, and yes, more the event planning. And then the other two is Cedar Yard Greetings and Ash Pop Gourmet Popcorn have other um, been great partners of mine for different parties, as well as supporters tagging me and encouraging me within the community, and they're right here in Ashkash. Okay. <laughs> You came ready. I should know. (laughs) My fan of the checklist. (laughs) That's me. (laughs) Okay. Well, my shout outs this week. We're going to keep it short and sweet. Want to send a shout out to the new to New North. What a great organization out here, just doing great things, connecting on DEI levels, on business levels, just trying to improve things. In I believe it's an eighteen county uh, region, which that's insane. But nonetheless. They do great things, and I have connections with them. So big shout-out to New North, big shout-out to Wibbick. I am part of one of the regional committees for Wibbick, an advisory uh, committee, and I went to a meeting the other day, and it was just fantastic being in the space and getting a chance to hear the stories of entrepreneurs in our region who it's not easy to start your own business, and it's – It's not just not easy. It's hard to get people to give you answers, to tell you what are the things you should be doing, what are your next steps, getting training for those things, trying to keep you from making the pitfalls and the mistakes so you can actually exist for multiple years and not disappear within your first year. And Wibbick does an amazing job of doing that, not only by providing training, but also providing loan opportunities to be able to grow the business the way that you might really want to grow it. And then want to send a shout out to a friend who's going through a really hard time. I don't want to put their business business out there, but there's something really, something really um, 
scary happening within their family. And so if they're out there listening, I just want to say, hey, love is out here. We appreciate you. I am sorry about what you're going through. And prayers are here. Prayers. And I hope that it all turns out blessed in the end. All right. And as you already know, I like to end every episode by just saying big shout out to my wife who supports me, holds me down in all sorts of amazing ways and continues to let me to host a podcast out of her house. I love you, baby. And thank you. Okay. So. We are at the end of this episode, and there's only one thing left to do, but you got three options to do it in, and that is this. You can leave Kosh listeners with some parting words of wisdom. You can tell the Kosh listeners, what would yourself today tell your 13-year-old self? Or option C, you can do both. All right, so words of wisdom, I would say hashtag happy day. And what I mean by that is my friend Sherry and her family came up with what's called hashtag happy day. And it's to remind yourself to always look at the bright side. Don't let others dim your light. Um, You might have a rough day, but there's always tomorrow. And to keep on trying something new. And part of that hashtag happy day, if you look her up, she also tries to do something once a month for herself, 12 months in the year, and just go out and take on that adventure. Um, as I kind of mentioned before that Timber said, Hey, that should have been your closing life is short and you don't want to miss out or regret. If there's something of interest, go do it. And that's okay. Even if you do it by yourself, take yourself out to dinner. Um, it's weird. I've tried it, but it's great. Take yourself on a date. It's all okay. But again, enjoy life. It's short and really try to Take on those memories, enjoy those that love, and those that are not filling up your cup, it's okay to walk away. Thank you. What'd you think? It was great. <laughs> Thank you. It was fantastic. It's the cash. <laughs> <laughs>